Welcome all to Oh Legends of Raspia, the comedy fiction fantasy real play role playing podcast with its own unique game, which is designed for anyone to pick up and play. One die, one sheet, and tarot, one player. That's right, we've got a Fobo solo episode, my friends. So pull up a chair, let down your hair, spend a few talks with the old Bard Fox. Last time, Fobear, Eni, and Mini narrowly escaped the clutches of Toria and tentacles of the now not so sleepy Boba. However, the ground broke apart and swallowed them whole, leaving the story on a cliff faller. Let's see where we go. So I think I am ready to go when you are, sir. I am ready! Ready for some hope, Legends of Raspia! Indeed I am! Well then, as usual, we're going to start our episode off with a perception roll. Just old Rico Tahi and myself. Hello. Hello. We're starting off strong. I'm still feeling the effects of the Aegis and from, uh... Smoking with German Battle and Strother Buff. Since Despite the fact that you have fallen and you have been splashed and utterly pushed and urged along this river underneath the surface of Raspia, you are still a little high. <laughs> um, well, in that case, then my perception total is 22. So as you are being bullied down this hefty stream, these currents nigh merciless, you notice a beam of light in the distance, as we had mentioned. But splitting down the center of that beam of light, you see what appears to be a rope. Oh, praise Eco, a rope. Ah yes, praise Eco for ropes indeed. This will be an agility to fight the current, to orient yourself, and navigate toward the rope. We'll also be rolling for Eni and me. Alrighty. Oh, um, uh, well, that's, uh, hmm, that's a one. Uh, I see. <laughs> so... <laughs> You're able to angle your body in such a way that you are certain you're headed toward that rope. However, you then feel a sudden tug below you as you are ripped beneath the currents. And you have one more action to your turn. Um... Uh, is there, like... Was it, like, a thing that pulled me, or was it the cur- like, the currents? Why, Rico Tahi, that would be a perception uh, how about, how about I just try to kick up, uh, above, back to the surface as hard as, hard as I can. Folk it. Agility to swim, folk it indeed. Uh, 16. Well, miraculously, though you rolled fairly well, you are still stuck beneath the current. No. This thing has wrapped around your ankle and you realize it is an actual physical thing which has drawn you beneath the surface. Not physical things. It's a physical thing. Why does it always physical things? <laughs> and with that fine question, we go to the world's turn. Let's do a perception. Uh, 15. In this case, the why of it all is a direct result of you fighting a giant monster up on the surface and all of you falling beneath into this river. This does, in fact, include the tendril cover, Sleepy Boba. Oh, yeah, that, I guess that makes sense then. Yep, yep. Yeah, you still in a boss fight, yo? But this hasn't been an attack, and so we will not go to a CT. Oh. Um, all right, uh, can I try to uh, wriggle this thing off of me? Yes, well, let's go ahead and do an agility as you try to wriggle. Wriggle and roll. That's a 19. You beat me just only barely, and you're able to pry at the tendril around your ankle. And suddenly it looses as you pull yourself to the surface. You look above you, and the rope is just about to pass. Oh. Uh, snag it. I want to snag it. 
This will be a dexterity for some snagging. You know what? You know what? I'm gonna drop the bank. Ooh, he's break on the bank! You hear from somewhere for no reason? <laughs> uh, I have a 15 advantage saved up, so. Lousy. Yep, so here it goes. Uh, yeah, um, 23. All righty, well, with your breaking of the bank, you succeed. It appears as though otherwise you might not have. You feel the wet rope in the firm grasp of both of your hands. This is going to be an agility to climb. We'll say as you go to the world's turn, throw some agility bones. There's water rushing all around you. There's no time for perceptions. Of course. It's gonna be an unnatural 20. Well, all righty tighty. You pull yourself out of the river, and as you look around you, you see, unfortunately, that Eni and Mini did not make it and grab the rope as you did. Oh no, we are being rushed away. And then you hear Eni mutter something about um, how he's used to being down here anyway, just like Fobo anyway, blah, 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 blah. And we hope we'll see them again, but there's no telling. <laughs> As you successfully agilitize your way up this rope, as you hear the clanging and screaming of armor and Torians therein um, below you in the river. Uh, however, yeah. you, you don't feel any wiggling on the bottom end of the rope, so you feel as though you are the only one that has made it. As you get to the top, let's do a perception roll. It's gonna be 18. You've made it. To the top of the rope, and you peek your tiny little Fobarian head out into the light, and your eyes are searing from the high noon sun of a familiar place that goes by a little name of Keltaria. What? You have made your way back via the subterranean water system, which you tap into as a Keltarian for your wells. In fact, as your eyes adjust, you realize that you know the exact way to pretty much everywhere in, uh, in here in Keltaria. Hmm. And we go to an open table. Um, okay, well, first things first. Since I know my buddies have already passed, um, can I like bring the rope? Can I just like bring the rope up a little bit and maybe like tie a knot in it so that it wouldn't be um, accessible to people uh, like Torians trying to climb up as well? This would be another dexterity, basically. Um, yeah, I think I will determine that that is that's a six. I see. Well, I will determine that that's a nix. Um, you did not, uh, your hands are so tired from climbing up that wet rope. It's, um, you, you try, you know, the heart, the heart and the mind is willing, but unfortunately the fingers say no way. Okay. Okay. Um, he says to his fingers. <laughs> I understand. I, I hear your messages loud and clear. Um, my prunes. <laughs> my prunes. <laughs> Dig a bit for a fantastic callback, my friend. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Um, speaking of prunes, uh, well, since I'm back in Cantaria, most of the troop, I'm still disguised as well in my very and, um, Do you mind reminding myself and the audience what your disguise looks like? Oh, it's just a bandana over my face. Mm, a classic disguise. <laughs> yep. Oh, and also I'm wearing the uh, pirate uh, S&M strap armor, uh, you know, the specially <laughs> made armor. Right, with the exposed uh, nips. The exposed nipples, yes. Uh, you know, which uh, I t personally take great uh, care in uh, making sure they're not overexposed to UV lighting, however, but, uh, you know, others may choose to uh, live differently. Yes, well, that will only mean that they are not, uh, they don't have a high tolerance for sunlight, unfortunately, so you may want to scoot along, as even in Kaltaria, though it is not hot enough to kill a person as quickly as in the arid knots, it is still pretty merciless underneath that Helios beam caster we call the sun. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, 
Let's see. I should get to safe haven. Um, I, f I, I, I can't. I can't imagine that all of the Torians are gone yet. So, uh, I could go to Grammy and Pappy's or the Mirage, but I don't want to. I, I, <laughs> that's, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Sorry, I'm but sorry. I, don't I want had to. to. Please, go, please go on. You don't want to what? I don't want to implicate them. Um, Smart. Uh, just in case. So uh, I could go to my parents' house. <laughs> dun, dun, dun! I only make these perhaps over enthusiastic notes because your parents, Fobo. We haven't investigated this angle of your backstory. I do not believe, have we? Um, nope. I don't tend to bring them up personally. Voice in my head. Um, mm. Oh, this is this is your this is your prunes speaking. Yeah, I'm talking to my prunes. Still uh, talking to the prunes. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I just <laughs> just in the middle of the well, looking at my hands, uh, <laughs> not yet pulling myself up. Just, you know, just really consulting my fingers here. Um, yeah, I guess I don't really talk to my parents or talk about my parents a whole lot, just because you know I don't. I don't you know, they don't. They, we just don't see eye to eye on a lot of uh, a lot of things. So, you know, they they want certain things for me, and I want certain things for myself, and they just don't align. And you know how it is. Yeah, yes, uh, but of course, but of course, I think it's a tale as old as time on any world, and so. To, uh, you don't mind implicating them in this crime, is what you're saying? Oh, no. <laughs> Certainly not. <laughs> no, they'll, they'll be fine. Excellent. Well, do you wish to sneak that way? Um, we're just going to bundle your little travels across Kaltaria. Though it is high noon, that tends to be one of the slower times, this time of the revolution. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, yes. Um, can I... Yeah. Can I stealth stride there? Hmm, this will require an agility, and you will have to spend 100 hustle. But for that, we will say you've made it. Okay. Um, I'm going to use tiptoe, uh, so I'll spend 105. Well, you know that they live in sort of the, uh, on the other side of the residential, similar neighborhood to where you went and broke into uh, Gadley's house when you went sniffing his zombie pants? Um, Allegedly. Right. Well, you and Gadley grew up not far from one another, um, so you do know that this is a highly occupied area. Um, so do you want to go on the front door just willy-nilly, or do you want to go kind of sneaky and try to make your way into the back? Oh, I'm definitely going sneaky. Okay. So sneaky and uh, in through the back door. So yeah, let's do an agility to go sneaky, and then we have one more coming for you. Uh, that's going to be 33. So, nobody exclaims that they have seen you. It seems as though you have made it without being seen. However, your parents, they're loud talkers. And so, although they don't have a privacy fence, all of their neighbors have a very high privacy fence on the side of the yard that is, par or that is adjacent to your parents' yard. Yep, yep, makes sense. So you're going to have to climb up and over one of those. They are 10 stretch tall, which means it will require more hustle. Well, I've got hustle. Um, yes, yeah. you do. Well, let's go ahead and throw those agility bones. Let's cool. see, how about you? <laughs> something. <laughs> it's 22 or something. Success. Although your neighbor's cat is meowing at you defensively. You still are able to make it up over the fence without anybody really noticing. That um, Hawthorne cat really has it out for me. Yes, yes, well, that's just super true. The Hawthorne cat's got a lot of personality, but he was raised by Jay Hawthorne, so what can we expect? <laughs> anyway, let's do a perception as we go to the world's turn. Nine. You begin to feel very nervous as you walk toward the back door. Sneaky walk, but as you walk toward the back door of your parents' house, your heart begins to beat harder and harder in your chest 
as you remember the times you've been here and the ways those times have gone. We reach out for the knob and we go to an open table. Also, I'm high. <laughs> Dude, that's definitely not helping. Nope. Definitely not. <laughs> not in this case. Oh, no, dude. I gotta go talk to my parents. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I just feel like my eyes are really red. Mm. I should just rub them a lot first. Oh, they all know. They all know. Uh, bear in mind, though, in Raspia, that stigma does not exist. Uh, like, right. Doja does in Earth. Asia uh, is, uh, it's, it's widely accepted for the blessing. That, uh, that is. Of course, of course. Um, that's not as funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess, well, since they're loud talkers, let me, um, can I press my ear to the door and um, kind of listen in first? See what I hear? Yes. This would be a perception since you are already sneakified. Uh, that's an unnatural 20. Very handsome. So you can hear that they are in the kitchen area, which the back door does open directly into. There are dishes kind of clanging, and it seems as though your parents are getting ready to host someone, or are perhaps hosting someone already. Okay. Well, I suppose I should, uh... Get it over with, then. Um, yeah, let's open. Let's try to open the door. Alrighty, perception as you twist the knob for which you are reaching. Uh, twenty-two. You feel the warm metal of the doorknob as you push, sort of sneak your way in. But the moment it opens, two very familiar faces. Shut over and look directly to you, and you see that your mother and friend, Gadley Bowmally, are sitting at the oh, table having fuck. their settly brunch. Let's do a result oh. test to see how both of them react, shall we? Fucking fuck. 17. Oh, it's your fob here. Oh, it's just so good to see you, sweetheart. Oh. Yes, yes, it's good and to see you too, mother. Yeah. Your big sweet mama, who looks just like you but without the mustache, shuffles over and gives you a big hug. Oh, hey there, sweetheart. Now, how are you? Hi, how hi, have mom. you been? Yeah. You. Oh, oh, look at these cheeks. Oh, you have not been eaten enough. Wait, where have you yeah. been? Yeah. Oh, well, fall bear. It's just you're... so good yep. to see ya. You know who's going to be happy to see ya. Uh, yeah, take three guesses, Phobo. <laughs> I'll take one guess, thank you, Gadley. It's going to be my dad. What? 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 No, she's talking about me, you damn fool. I'm sitting right here. Okay, well, I still only needed two then. Oh, Twist. it's so it's so good to see my best friend. Why are you being so mean to me, Fobo? Yeah, now Fobo, why are you being mean to your old best friend, Gadley Bomealy? I'm not. Is it? He's... Oh, Han, you know, come here. She kind of leans in closely and whispers it into your ear in a way that is just too close. But like, you know, you kind of like, okay. She, well, you know, it's okay that you lost your wash off to Gadley. If you, you know, if oh, you just accept God. a couple of pointers he... from your friend, you know, you could do a lot better. Look, I just, I hate to see it. <gasps> Look, Ma, I don't want to talk about the wash off right now. Okay? She grab, she grabs your hands and she, she kind of pulls them up. <gasps> what happened? into your little prunesies. No, I don't want to talk about the prunesies. I'm, look, I'm just here so I can rest and then uh, be on my way right back out to Kaltari again. I just fought off a giant little thing or giant mm -hmm. boss thing and... Uh, oh, a whole giant boss thing. Huh? Here he goes with one of his stories again, Gadley, like we talked about No, last no, 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 it's serious. It, it actually happened. Yeah, no, the oh, sleepy oh, boba. Yeah. We took him oh, out. Oh, Sleepy Boba, huh? Why is it called that, I wonder? <laughs> it was because it was sleeping, I guess, the whole time. Oh, it's not because it'll let you down and trap you so hard that you break your pelvis on the sand? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, why would I know that? Anyway, I don't think that's the I, etymology, no. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I sleepy be Boba. You know, there you go. So why don't you write it into one of your songs? You never play enough music. Oh, not there. this again, Ma. Look, You're look, so I really... Talented. No, look, I really don't need to talk about that right now. 
Oh, uh, dear, Don, go oh, dear. I won't say her middle name here in front of your best friend, but uh, you know what? You're never in too big a hurry to have some brunch with your ma and your best friend. Why don't you have a seat? When I could use some food, it has been quite some time. Yeah, I told you, your cheeks are looking scrawny. I don't, okay, thanks for the commentary. Mm-hmm, scrawny cheeks you got, hon. Uh, so you, you guys sit down for your little brunch with your, quote, best friend and your mother. How can I hate this guy? Perception roll. <laughs> Five. So you're getting very sleepy, very sleepy, as you sit down and finally feel comfort wash over you. Not only that, but as you feel comfortable, your parasympathetic nervous system kicks in, and you need to have what we here at Bard Fox call a business meeting. <laughs> Perfect. So is that a brown roll, or...? Uh, I don't care what kind of roll it is. Why don't you roll on out of here and go to the bathroom? Sit here smelling on your stink. Where have you been in the sewers? Was the sleepy boba another name for one of your shats? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Dongo Dare. I didn't mean to use that language. He just brings it out of me when he's so mean all the time. Or it just lays latently in you all the time because you're so full of shite and shite language. Oh, I would ask the two of you to kindly cut that right out. But sorry, now, Fobo, have, have you smoked your Isha today? You know, you're an artist. You got to make sure you keep a healthy intake, you know. Yes, you get I'm all snappy Isha. when you don't. Is that why you're being a bully to your best no, friend here? Yeah, no, I, no, I smoked the Isha today. It's fine. We're fine. You know what, honey? Why don't you go make, and then we'll make you a nice blade. Does that sound good? <laughs> And yeah. maybe tonight you can catch your grandmother's show. No, no, I don't think I'll do that. Uh, oh, she'll be she'll be slamming her cheeks on the bar like she does. I know, I know, and I'm ha and I'm very happy that she does, and I'm very happy that she gets a lot out of that uh, creatively. So much. And, we all do. Yep, and I'm glad that that's you know something she's taken up again uh, for her. Uh, it's just, you know, not something I personally would like to witness, actually, so... Oh, oh honey, why are you blushing think, so very no, red? No, I think I'm... I think that's just the, the business meeting, Bill. I, I'll, I'll be right back. Skrrr goes the four-legged stool as you, as you uh, <laughs> make your way out to the bathroom. Um, so, you go into your bathroom of your parents' home. And it is just as it was when you grew up. Very nostalgic as you walk in there. There's fresh water in the wash bucket. There's a nice covering over the hole. There's even a nautical theme going on in there, which was hard to come by out there in the desert. <laughs> Where did she get all these she seashells? So let's do a brawn test. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and spare the audience the details, but it's important to know how things go for you. Brawn test as you do your business. Twelve. It's all right. You've been uh, you've been busy, so it's good. Um, perception after you finish washing your hands. Uh, six. You are overwhelmingly sleepy, and as you walk out into the hallway, which leads back to the kitchen, you notice that your bedroom door is open, and you see your old childhood bed. Which, given your stature, no offense, is absolutely still your size. <laughs> None taken. It wouldn't, however, have fit Eenie. Yeah, it, I know. Uh, they, you don't have to rub he, this in, prunes. Yes, yes, of course. You have your fingers as they continue to speak to you. Um, you, you say, I oh, am no, tired. <laughs> <laughs> and with that statement, you can decide, do you want to go to brunch? Which will take energy from you continually. And let's be honest, you're on the run. You gotta rest when you can. So yeah. it's kitchen or bedroom, Mr. Dr. Dan. Let's go. I do wanna do the bedroom. I do wanna do the bedroom. Yeah, let's he do says, that. Looking at his, his, his still pruned but now drying hands. Let's do that. Was that your conclusion? Yeah, let's do that. I don't, I don't trust Gadley, though. 
Let's do a perception as you make your way into your room, still uttering to your fingies. Ten. You barely make it to your comfortable bed. Your, your booty hits it because you're just going to sit down for a tick. And then all of a sudden, you are asleep. So, oh, this has been Ope, Legends of Raspia. We appreciate your listening. I am Han Blackhunt. This is Rico Tahi. Hello. You can find us at the links that we put in the description. We love you all. Thank you again for listening. And always, always, good luck back there on Earth. Stole it from your VO. Dang Legends it. of Raspia. Ope Legends of Raspia is brought to you by Bard Fox. The game Legends of Raspia is created and designed by Han Blackheart and Rick Tahi. Olor is produced, edited, and mixed by Rick Tahi. The Raspian mythology is created by Han Blackheart with notable contributions from the collective creators and friends of Bard Fox. Faubert Dangodera is played by Rick Tahi, who you can most certainly find on Instagram at fo.didly. Game moderation and all other characters are played by Han Blackheart, who is becoming sentient of me, which is disturbing. Find his music on Spotify as Opalpunk or his Instagram and Twitter as The Opalpunk. Music by Bard Fox. Follow their channel on YouTube for more gaming music. This episode's song is called Adventures in Kaltaria, which is fitting. Artwork by Xanthi Blackheart. And one last plug, check out Olor's Instagram at Ope Legends of Raspia for memes and recipes. Um, thank you, noble listener. And as always, good luck back there on Earth. It's not as pithy if Han steals it from me, is it? Uh, well, he'll get his. Epilogue. <laughs> Da, 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 da. You've listened to the credits, and now you get to hear one small bit of the sorry, story. I, sorry, I actually just, uh, I took the epilogue, uh, I left it in the bathroom. Ah, all <laughs> too true. That was a people log that you left, however. Ah. Common, common misconception. Hmm. So, let's do a perception as you continue to <clears throat> sleep. Inception. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Inception roll. Perfect. Five. Just barely, you feel ginger hands pulling the covers up to your little chinny chin chin, and you feel a nice, nice stroke on your forehead, a little, little peck on the forehead, as you are being tucked in. Ma, ma, don't trust Gadley. You he's, utter without opening your eyes. Please go on. He's a smelly turd of a person. Oh, hon. You hear as this voice gets closer to your ears. You're a smelly turd of a person. <laughs> oh. Can, can, I wake up and, can I wake up and start choking anything near me? That is going to be a brawn test to see if you can fight this overwhelming urge to keep a sleeper. Ten. <laughs> You cannot! Get no. Cackles! <laughs> this is a As nightmare. runs out of the room. And that ends our epilogue. Goodbye! <laughs> Damn it.